Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Miller. We're going to do our 4-2 soil formation notes. Here we go. So what to know about soil? Well, soil is defined as the loose weathered material on Earth's surface in which plants can grow. Soil rich in humus is typically very fertile. Humus, not hummus. That's what you eat is hummus. Humus you don't want to eat. All right, humus is what makes our soil fertile. So what is humus? Humus is defined as the decayed organic material which is dark in color and forms as plants and animals decay. So this is basically right in that top layer of your soil where all the leaves, the dead leaves, the tree branches, our twigs, and dead bugs, all that stuff is decaying and breaking down. That's our humus. Now soil fertility is decreasing when moisture and nutrients are depleted. Um, so the more moisture and nutrients you have, the more fertile that soil is and the better it is for plants. And of course, soil is full of decomposers and burrowers. Burrowers meaning things that dig down in like moles and voles and mice. Um, decomposers are your worms, your, your maggots, things that are going to break down beetles, that are going to break down organisms. Well, let's talk about, about our three main soil particles. We're going to talk about uh, sand, silt, and clay. Sand is our largest particle. And then we have silt, and then we have clay, which is the smallest particle. Now, if you look over here, we have an example of sand versus clay. Sand particles are huge looking compared to clay, which you cannot even see with the human eye. So notice all the space between the sand particles. Notice there's very few spaces between the clay. Okay, think about that. When you go to the beach and the water washes on the shore and then it washes away and how quickly the sand kind of dries out well that's why because sand has so many spaces between them uh, it quickly dries out so which particle allows water to travel through the fastest based on your prior knowledge you should say well sand and you'd be right because it's got more space that water can get through quicker than the clay soil oh soil texture graphs i like these these are fun uh, but they look complicated, and then they're not. The two that you see up at the top there are exactly the same, just one is color-coded, one has the actual lines to help you follow and figure out the type of soil that you have. Notice the three soils that we just talked about, sand, silt, clay, are on there, and that's all you have. And it goes from 0 to 100% on each of the sides of the triangle. Notice there's sand, there's clay, there's silt. 0 to 100, 0 to 100, 0 to 100. So, for example, what if you have soil that you know is made up of 40% silt, 30% clay, and 30% sand? What type of soil do we have? The hint, just find each percent and then follow their lines down and where they intersect, that's the type of soil you have. So here's silt and there's 40%. So this line's going to come down like this. Then there's 30% clay. All right, clay is over here, 30 is going to come straight across like that, and then finally 30% sand. Here's sand, there's 30%, follow that up, and where all three meet is right in that box called clay loam. All right, now you try it. How about 10% silt, 10% clay, 80% sand? All right, here's 10% silt right up here. So you follow that down to 10% clay, which is clear down here at the bottom, 10% clay, so we're about right there, and then it says 80% sand, which is right back here, so we're falling right in that sandy loam, and that's what it is. All right, now you know how to read a soil texture graph. All right, let's talk about some of our common soils that we're going to hear and see uh, in, in class here. Number one, loamy soils. Loamy soils, uh, it's soil made up of equal parts of clay, sand, and silt. It's the best soil there is because there's roughly equal amounts, 18% silt, 18% sand, not a whole lot of clay, just the right amount. You got some nice organic material in there, 25% water, 25% air. It's the most fertile soil that we have, and it's the best for growing crops and plants. It's nice and crumbly. You can see right there in the picture, it's got a nice rich color to it. Loamy soils are good. We like loamy soils. Now we get to sandy soils. Well, we just kind of talked about sandy soils. Obviously, it drains pretty quickly. There's a lot of space between the pores. 
So pure sand, probably not the best for growing because water's going to dry out or drain through it pretty quick and make it pretty dry. It's large enough to be seen with the eye, the sand particles, that is. They're very gritty, so when you take a clump of soil and you rub it through your hands and your fingers, if you feel it being real gritty or any type of grit in it, you know it's got some type of sand in that soil. It will drain very quickly, as we already talked about. And finally, sandy soil with little humus is not fertile. So you'll want to have, hopefully, some nice amount of humus in there with the sand to make it a little more fertile. Clay soils. We should be very familiar with clay soils here in Hancock County. There's no doubt. Uh, it is the smallest particle size. You can't see it with the human eye. Um, it's very fine textured and it's smooth and very sticky. Uh, when it gets wet, you've probably experienced it in your own yard. Uh, it feels like Play-Doh, essentially. You roll it in a ball, it's going to stay in a ball. That's clay soil and we got tons of it here. And it holds water for a long time. So if you go out and you drive around Hancock County, you see lots of ponds. Well, why? Because we've got a lot of clay soil, and that clay soil will hold the water in, which makes it great for building ponds. It is our predominant soil in Hancock County, and it will drain much slower than all the other soils. Finally, silty soil. Uh, it's smaller than sand. It feels real powdery when it's wet, and I should have some examples in class for you guys to feel so you can see what I mean. And then finally, it does not hold together well when it's wet. Not like clay. Clay holds together. This stuff breaks apart pretty quickly. All right. Now let's talk about the layers of soil. There's really five main layers I want you to know. O, A, B, C. This should say R. So forget the D. This should say R. I don't know why it says D. Our humus gives topsoil its rich brown color, which is up here in the very, very top little area. And then leaching takes minerals down. Leaching basically means carrying it down uh, through the different soils there. All right. So let's investigate each one of these soils a little closer here. Okay. There are three main layers of the soil. Uh, the undisturbed rock below the soil is called the bedrock. And then, of course, beneath that, uh, we have our parent material, which we'll get into here shortly. But let's start at the top, which is the O layer. It goes, think of it like this. O is like the shape of your head, which sits on the top of your body. So this sits on the top of soil. So that's one way to remember that. After that, it all goes in alphabetical order. O, A, B, C, and then R stands for rock at the bottom. Well, this little tiny, it's not very deep. It's just a little area, a few inches deep usually. It's called the organic horizon, the O layer. It consists of all that decayed organic material that we talked about earlier, uh, which includes dead leaves and plants. This humus gives soil horizon its very rich color and makes it very, very fertile. All right. Underneath that, we're going to talk about the A layer. This is the A horizon. This is known as topsoil. We want lots of topsoil. This is what makes our fertile soil, our soil very fertile, I should say. In the A horizon, water percolates downward and carries the minerals as it goes. And this is called leaching. The leaching or leach material then carries the minerals down into the lower soil horizons. Farmers like lots of topsoil that makes things good for growing, for the roots of the plants to get down into. So the deeper the topsoil, the better it is. Underneath the A horizon is what we call the B horizon. B horizon is called the subsoil. Prefix sub means under. This horizon is where the leach minerals from horizon A end up. These leach minerals may color the subsoil. For example, the presence of iron might make it look reddish orange. Finally, our next layer is C layer. It's called the zone of weathered bedrock. This is where rocks start to break down and they get into smaller and smaller pieces down in here. Finally, our last layer, as I said, was called the R layer. R stands for rock. This is our solid bedrock. All right, this is a solid layer of rock at the very bottom. Think of the rock holding the soil all up. Those are our main soil horizons, OABCR, in that order. 
All right, three flashcards I need you to make and have ready when you come to class tomorrow. All the definitions are right here in your notes. Number one, a definition and a flashcard for soil. A definition and a flashcard for humus. And finally, a definition and flashcard for loam. All right, we'll see you in class.